It's High Noon with David. He's gone and fallen in love with Jesus and bringing boldness to the body of Christ. Here's David. Welcome to High Noon with David. This is show number 238. I'm here to bring you a gift. The gift of boldness. What for? Boldness to believe. I've been at this for a long, long time. I'm talking to two of you. Those of you that already are believers and those of you that are about to become believers. He said, where your, where your suit and tie at, boy? <coughs> I ain't got none. <laughs> I quit that a long time ago. In fact, when I was raised in the church, I didn't wear a suit and tie then. And then I started in the ministry, and they told me I had to cut my hair short. Well, I cut it short. I shave it off every day, <laughs> except for my beard, of course. And I used to have long hair. There's a guy named Phil Driscoll, some of you. May turn your nose up at him because he's messed up so much, but he keeps coming back to God just like David did in the Bible. And he sings this song, I Exalt Thee. I listen to him every morning. He showed up at, at the school I went to, Kenneth E. Hagen School in 1981. Had hair down below his shoulders, and he'd blow that horn, the anointing so strong on that man. I was so glad to see somebody with long hair show up. Could he look just like Jesus? <laughs> I wear flip-flops. And, of course, if I, if I could grow my hair out again, I'd, it, my hair would be long. I just don't care. All the dead <clears throat> religious tradition just gets in the way. You know, they said you was in rebellion to have long hair back in the day. Well, you can be in rebellion with a shaved head. You can be just as much in rebellion with a short haircut. It's ridiculous to say stuff like that. Uh, there's a movie coming out called The Jesus Revolution. It'll be out pretty soon. And it's about what happened. I lived through that day when the hippies started going to church and messing up everything and people getting upset and we ain't going to have that. Just like they did with speaking in tongues during the charismatic renewal. Oh, we ain't going to have that in our church. Yeah, you say God's in control. No, he ain't. You in control. You dictate what goes on in your dead church. Do, 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 do. Well, we just ain't going to, that just ain't the way Grandma did it. Well, Grandma's in heaven now, and she's praying for your butt to get in the Word and find out what's spiritual and what really matters. And so I'm here to bring you the gift of boldness to help you. Whew, good frost this morning, and I got me a, I got me a pretty good fire going. My flame's gone down, so I'm going to back up just a little bit and warm up. You say, why are you idiot? Why are you out early in the morning like that and it's so cold? Because all the religious traditional people are still asleep because they ain't got no prayer life. <laughs> I love starting early. Ain't nobody up to bother me. I ain't getting no phone calls at 3.38 in the morning and we're getting ready for prayer. We had so much fun in prayer this morning. Oh, my gosh. My friend whose kids were kidnapped. 17, 18 years ago, we, we've been praying together that long. When his kids were kidnapped, we prayed every morning, 5 o'clock, for most mornings, for three and a half years. And we were, it, it hit me this morning. I said, David, we didn't just pray out the rescue of your kids. We prayed out our future. And boy, he said, that's right. That's right. And that's the reason I don't worry like I used to. Oh, I got people hating my guts. Well, I ain't going to run hunt them down. I will. The Holy Spirit tells me to. I've, I've laid in here where I live and laid in the bed at 4.30 in the morning. And the Lord said, it's so-and-so day. He called a name. I said, okay, Lord. And I get up and get my day started and go into. I went to one preacher's office. He running a whopping 50, 60 people in his church. And the secretary, I walked up to his secretary in the outer office and said, I'm here to see so-and-so. And they said, she said, well, you have to have an appointment. I said, you tell him that David Dixon's here to see him. Of course, he's glad to see me. We we got things straightened out and came dear friend, tried to hire me to be on staff at his church. I did him a favor and turned him down. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. I, I'm here to, as big as anything to encourage you to be led by Holy Spirit. Well, well, how are you led? Well, number one, you hang around him so you can know his voice. 
if you're dating a boy or dating a girl, and somebody you heard a strange voice say, come on, honey, let's go to the movie. You say, wait a minute, I don't know your voice. Who are you? It's important uh, that you don't follow strange voices. How do you know which one's the right one? Hanging out in the Word and in prayer. The Word says, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you and for you. The word abide means stay. It means the habitual. It means having this habit of hanging around him. I know you think, a lot of you think I'm totally nuts, and I acknowledge it. I'm a carrier. <laughs> but I'm having more fun than most all of you are. But I just don't worry. I just don't care no more. I have cast the whole of my care upon Jesus because he cares for me. So I don't care because I can't. I ain't got no cares anymore. But what about this and what about that? Yeah, what about it? I've got a friend. Barbara Sanders has been praying with us for years and she's turning 87 next week. She's on prayer every day. And I told her, I said, she wants to go to heaven so bad and they... They've, the doctors have checked her out the last two years said, you're the healthiest 86-year-old woman. You're the healthiest 87-year-old woman we've ever seen. She just goes, because she's so ready to go to heaven and be with the Lord. But I say, now, now, Barbara, you're closer to going to heaven than any of us, most likely. And when you get out of your earth suit, when you get out of your body, you ain't going to be concerned about politics you ain't going to be concerned about what the new the news headline is for the day and what's going on with this and going on with that. Because people in heaven are extremely happy. Every one of them. <laughs> and I desire that you be one of them. Listen, just because you went to church during the magic hour, that don't mean you're, you're going to heaven. What means you're going to heaven is is and the people talk about confessing sin and everything. Romans ten, eight, nine, and ten says this. What saith it? The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. That if you will say with your mouth, if you will confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Well, I don't believe that. Oh yeah. I grew up in a Baptist church where they, they said, make your profession of Christ. Well, the word profession in the original language means confession. The word says, hold fast to the confession of your faith. How you do that? Say it right now. Say, Jesus is Lord. The Bible says, if you confess Jesus is Lord, Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10. And if you, if you believe in your heart, that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So say this, I choose to believe. Jesus, you died for me. And God, you raised Jesus from the dead. Well, the Word says if you do that, you're saved. And I'm here with the spirit of boldness to get it off on you to believe that. This is a rescue. This is not religion. Religion sucks. Religion stinks. You know, I, I, I speak in tongues. Boy, I mean, the Word said Paul, who, who was killing believers, was holding the coats of them that stoned Stephen in the book of Acts. And he had a Damascus Road experience with Jesus. I hope you listen to me. And Paul said, what is it then? I will speak in tongues. And I will speak in the understanding or pray in tongues and pray in the understanding. He said, I will sing in tongues and sing in the interpretation or in the understanding. Both. They both work. Hope you're listening to me. I let it be known up front I speak in unknown tongues. It, when I bring that up in most conversation, conversation over or it changes the deer hunting or video, it changes to something else. Hope you're listening to me. I know Catholics, wonderful Catholics that are born again and speak in tongues. They are the, some of the most precious believers I've ever met. I know Southern Baptists that speak in unknown tongues. I was baptized twice 
as a Southern Baptist. Brokoshne bukuma se lipu kon twa besri kuta la meshne. I've been a doing it for 50 something years. Am I still a woolly booger? You betcha. <laughs> I'm, I'm always causing trouble. That's my job. I got in, I, I do the hot tub and then I got go underwater in the cold tub and this guy owns another gym. He said, you, you making waves this morning. He said, that's my job. <laughs> One pastor's wife ran into me at the post office and said, what you been up to? I said, I've just been going around causing trouble. She grinned and said, that's what you do. <laughs> I love it too. It's a great mission. I'm like the Blues Brothers. I'm on a mission for God. But I want to encourage you. you. People tell me that one girl, say, I've been to every one of my high school reunions. <laughs> and one gal, she, you could, she, the word got to me, she drank all afternoon and just get up enough courage to come to our high school reunion. And she told me that night, she said, David, I saw one of your posters one time over in Alabama. And I wanted to come to your meeting so bad. And she said, I just didn't feel like I could do it, that I, that I could even show up. And I, I got tears in my eyes. I said, I wish you'd come. Because I don't give a rat's behind how bad your life's been, how people have put you down and put you under their thumb and, and made you feel lesser than, than a, the belly of a snake. Jesus loves you. See, I'm an underdog man. So we not hail from the state of Mississippi. We we've been the bottom on everything. We've been the fattest state and the poorest state. I mean, the county I'm from is number one or number two on food stamps. People on food stamps. I and I, I just been around poverty and all this stuff all my life. Gr- growing up here, growing, and and I and I got changed because I saw. That the Bible says God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. See, a lot of folks are like, now God ain't into giving you money and stuff. That's a lie. You need to read your Bible. Quit just repeating what your denomination or your group says. It's funny, a lot of people that say they, they got buku of money. <laughs> Hypocrite. <laughs> boy, it's hard to keep that middle finger from, won't it just wants to go, boom, you go, down, boy, down, boy, down, boy. That's just, you know, it's religion stinks folks and it can it comes under a lot of different names this rescue called jesus see what separates jesus from the religions is that jesus is alive and all the rest of them's dead i serve a live god i serve a live jesus nobody else died for me say well david how do you know to believe that because i've seen the miracles and the healings by following him. Oh, oh, praise God. I I have been in, I'll never forget, in Guatemala. I, they found out I had construction experience. And within three weeks, they had me overseeing 60 Guatemalans building buildings and school buildings for the mission compound there. And uh, we had a large mission organization. We had airplanes and sent teachers to Costa Rica, El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, Mexico, countries all around there, Belize. And we're looking at sending people into Cuba. And actually, I've been to Cuba and been in Havana and some other parts there. And uh, we we had a lot going on there. And I was like, what am I doing down here? I, I can't even, I couldn't even, I, I could rub my stomach. And point to my mouth, and I could get me something to eat when I'd go out on the streets by myself. I had, an, I knew enough Spanish to say, "Where's the bathroom?" And finally, I need something to eat. <laughs> and uh, God threw me into a situation, but I tell you what He did in that situation. I'll never forget. There was a guy that that attached himself to me. He was a true evangelist, young Guatemalan. He was fiery. And I'll never forget, we had about 50 or 60 Guatemalans from outside coming and working on some buildings. And I, I was talking to the Lord about them one day, and, and we didn't even know if they were saved. And I was asking, and, and, and so on one day, instead of eating lunch with all the missionaries, I asked the head of the, the contractor, I asked him, is it all right if I bless your guys with a, with a Pepsi and a 
and a dessert, you know, and during right at the end of their lunch. And I just want five minutes. He says, sure. So I got two cases of Pepsi or three cases of high. Yes, that's what you got in Guatemala. And had them ice cold. And I passed them out to everybody, and we and I and I got my truck up there, and I stood the the Guatemalan evangelist because he could, he could really speak Spanish, boy, and that's where he lived. And I put him on top of that toolbox, and I turned him loose, preaching Jesus to all these folks, and 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 people. Some of those workers got born again at lunchtime over a Pepsi. The Bible says, he or she that winneth souls is wise. It means, why, winneth means you're winsome. That's what Pepsi is. Winsome. Now, I like Coca-Cola. I drink Pepsi too, but I have a little partial to Coca-Cola. I know I ain't supposed to say that stuff on television. I just don't care. And listen to me real strong. He or she that winneth souls is wise. The word winneth means you're winsome. And number two, the word wise means you're cunning, you're subtle. It means the use of trickery. Those guys didn't have a clue they were going to hear the gospel that day at noon. It shocked the missionaries when they saw what we'd done. I didn't ask anybody's permission. I don't ask people's permission to preach the gospel. And I don't get invited to as many churches as I used to because I preach in my cowboy hat and flip-flops and my get heated in my flip-flops, I flip my flip-flops off and walk, preach barefooted. I'm a good barefoot preacher. Woo! <laughs> you say, well, they ain't never going to lie that in my church. Don't worry, I don't want to come to your church. <laughs> you know, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And that's what we're after. I want to challenge you. You know, I always do salvation on this show and teach people how to get saved. But I'm going to tell you something. I've seen tens and tens and tens of thousands of people receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and speak in unknown tongues. I don't like that. Well, go watch Bugs Bunny. He's on one of these 1,000 channels on this TV station or, or on your cable system or whatever you own. You're not my market. I'm after hungry people. And they come, and you've come in all sides. Some of the richest people in this county have said, David, I watch your show every week. Some of the poorest without a pot to pour water in said, David, I watch your show every week. You can get me on antenna. That's what's cool. You can watch me in the prisons. That's what's cool. Word's gotten back to me that you're watching in the prisons, and that excites me to no end. But I'm going to tell you something. I, well, here we go. I'll give you a few points about speaking in unknown tongues. Number one, who does the speaking in tongues, you or Holy Spirit? And 99.9% of people say, well, Holy Spirit does it. No, 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 no. The Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses of scriptures, let everything be established. Well, here's one. Acts 2, 4 says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Who did the speaking in tongues? They did. The disciples did. Those waiting on the Lord, the 120 spoke in unknown tongues. I'll give you another one. 1 Corinthians 14, 14. Paul said, what is it then? I will speak in unknown tongues. I will. I use my will to do it. There's not an invisible hand that comes down. And takes your lips and forces your lips to move to do it. That's ridiculous. People say, well, it's as the Spirit wills. Yeah, well, the Spirit's willing if you are. But if you ain't willing, He ain't going to force Himself on you. Holy Spirit can be grieved. And the Holy Spirit can be quenched. I've gotten people speaking in tongues and prayed with them daily over the phone. And then here comes some idiot, religious idiot, full of doubt and unbelief. Say, well, no, 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 you don't need to be doing that. And they back off. I made this decision years ago and the light was shining on the word just like the light is the sun just coming over the trees and shining on my face I got revelation in the word about these things and he gave that experience to everybody if you will receive it but it's up to you to receive it 
Oh, I, and when I first got speaking in tongues, I got Bobo Mashosho. And I'd wear it out. And I went, but it, one thing it made me do, it made me go to the Word and search out the Word. And the biggest thing I found out is that God is not a respecter of persons. Now you say, well, we ain't going to allow that in our church. Yeah, a lot of things you don't allow in your church. And God ain't moving in your church either. Oh, we live in a day where so many that used to speak in tongues have gotten so polished. See, polish don't fit me. <laughs> I don't. Pe- most people are shocked to find out I'm a preacher, unless I meant they see or hear me ministering. Because I don't. I don't dress like a preacher. This is my suit and tie I got on right now, and I'm pulling this coat tie around my, tight around my neck to keep warm this morning. Jesus loves you. He's not a respecter of persons. If he filled Paul, he'll fill you. And then you get drained out, you need to get filled again. That's the reason I pray daily. And it ain't because I'm a hot shot and because I'm better than anybody else. But I tell you, life is cake with a prayer life. But it's horrible without one, just worrying all the time and concerned about your kid. I want to wake up. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Well, why do you believe that, David? Because 1 Corinthians 14 says, when you speak in unknown tongues, you're speaking to God. And he or she or she or he that speaks in unknown tongues edifies herself or himself. The word edifies just like charging up a battery for your car. And I stay charged, baby. People say, well, you, David, sometimes you look like, act like you drunk on that show. I say, baby, I ain't drunk. I'm extremely drunk. I'm drunk on the Spirit of God. Man, I've run out of time already. Jesus is Lord. David Dixon Ministries. He's Lord of this ministry. Come join the journey. Be a participator and not a spectator. I'm going to come back just in a minute. I'm going to wrap up what I started about speaking in tongues. It's a glorious thing. I do it every day. I got a guy that uh, met me at the liberal coffee shop down here, came all the way from Hattiesburg, got fired from his job, from the bank, two week, two days before he came up, he received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaks in tongues, a banker, and he's on the phone with us every day praying, and, and one of the ladies on the phone prophesied, you are not only going to get a better job with better money, they're going to come looking for you. And four weeks after that, another bank came and found him, and he now works for that bank and makes more money than he did with the one that fired him. Woo! Thank God for the Holy Ghost. And you can laugh and ridicule and mock me all you want to. I guarantee you my life's better than yours. I don't care if you got a trillion million gazillion dollars. I sleep good at night. I'll be right back in just a minute. Back again. Hope I got this thing right. I hit a wrong button just a minute ago. <laughs> you know, I, I know just certain things to do on this camera and how to edit. If I get out of that little stream, I got to holler, help. <laughs> so I hope I didn't mess it up. But listen to me. There's a few pointers about speaking in tongues. Number one, you do the speaking in tongues. Number two, 1 Corinthians 14 says he or she or she or he that speaks in tongues talks unto God and not unto men, women. So you're talking to God when you do it. And it's an act of your will that you do it. Paul, you say, well, that's Paul. Well, if God is not a respecter of persons, he works for you too. So it's an act of your will. Those three important things. And the Bible says, open your mouth and I'll fill it. You have to have expectation. I'm a hunter. When I'm hunting, whether I'm on the ground, I love to stalk. I love to hunt on the ground with a thread hanging off the end of my barrel. And I have me a little, some powder I'll puff in the air and it tells me exactly where the wind's coming from. And I've stalked right up in a 19 deer before just standing around eating. And I'm just standing there frozen. And I, but I have expectation. And then you should have the same thing about the things of God. You expect God to move in your life. I got, I got three people working for the ministry now. Got a lady out of New York that's managing everything. She's dynamic. She is so awesome. And I got 
two guys here local working and uh and we we got some volunteers coming in and it's getting busy but things are exploding I'm, I'm, my first book's coming out eventually i'm i've been categorizing my stories for years now and i've got over probably about 800 of them uh documented uh things that have happened over the last 42 years i'm gonna tell my stories so thank you for your agreement thank you for your participation thank you for praying you know whether you help or not or whether you pray or not i ain't gonna stop i proved i'm gonna hang with it and uh and i can't believe that i'm still here it's just the grace of god being multiplied in my life so say this after me say jesus is lord say i choose to believe hey i want to throw this little episode in on how to partner and help this ministry out the word partner is one who takes part with another to do something and i know a bunch of you want to take part with me to help me do something what are we doing we're doing discipling and evangelism we're doing discipling especially through prayer 4 30 every morning of the week till up for about an hour to an hour and a half monday through friday 11 30 to 1 p.m we have we have a bunch of folks praying daily and the best way to disciple is somebody is through prayer and teaching of the word and equipping Another thing we're doing is evangelizing, just like through this show, and we're reaching people one-on-one and through meetings, and there's a lot of fruit, and we're having a whole lot of fun. I want to read you a scripture. Remember, a stingy planter gets a stingy crop. A lavish planter gets a lavish crop. I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your own mind. This is a scripture. What you will give. That will protect you against sob stories. And I just don't know we're going to make it if you don't help us. I'm in my 42nd year. And uh, I ain't had to beg and I ain't had to sob for your money. This will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting. God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. Tell you a real quick story about a young man that came to us, started praying with us. He was scared to get a job because he'd get around the crew again and get back on drugs. He temporarily went back on drugs, came off, and he will tell you the thing that has helped him more than anything else. He prays with us daily. He became a youth pastor. The the, the great fruit, and he's been off of drugs, and he'll tell you the best thing that ever helped him was daily prayer, daily in the Word with us, and in growing with a group that loves him. So that's just one of the stories, some of the fruit. There's many more, and we'll share others. Thank you for helping. I know you want to. It's High Noon with David. He's gone and fallen in love with Jesus and bringing boldness to the body of Christ. Here's David.